So welcome back on uh, Roller Derby City on the Quad Skate Shop track for up next Team Japan versus Team Belgium. That's right, Statman here with you. I'm Valkyria, hello again. Um, we have the first elimination bout of this tournament. That's right, this is the first one that'll see a team uh, be able to pack their stuff. Although both of these teams have traveled far enough, I don't think they want to reschedule their plane tickets. <laughs> Probably not. Although Japan definitely is that team with the further distance than Belgium. That's right, Japan is the second longest traveled team in this tournament, second only to Australia. Um, well, we're just checking back on the scores. Um, Belgium lost the last match, rematch with uh, Team Germany. And the last time these two teams met, the score was 241 to 88 in favor of Belgium. But Japan had a huge learning curve. During this tournament, the guys learned pretty fast, pretty much. Well, the Japanese showed up to this tournament uh, without a single men's league in the country. Right. Individually, they had played very little derby. Even the most experienced had played very little of standard MRDA rules derby. And so this was a massive learning experience for them. The first bout, you could, you could see many of their skaters not knowing what the penalties were and just trusting that when the ref said go, you go. Right. And then by the end, they were a well-oiled machine. There were, especially in the first bout, they didn't really know what uh, recycling was. or No, how to, no clue. Or for the jammers, how to handle it being recycled. Or for the blockers, what am I doing? What shall I do if my jammer is being recycled? Absolutely. And there were several situations where a jammer would recycle behind a blocker and the jammer had already gotten by that blocker so the blocker didn't try to block him again. Yep. He just, he got confused because of that recycling behavior. Yeah. So that is, for example, one point that the Japanese learned pretty quickly how to handle recycling. All right, so it looks like we're going to delay the start of the bout a little bit until the track gets uh, properly swept. The, that the last two teams, um, apparently the, at the end of the bout, there was quite a little dirt on the track, so they're just going to take a little bit to clean it up because you can't have skaters slipping on the track. That's right. And Japan are already fighting one injury. Yes, it is uh, Cho, I think, who got yes. hurt. Uh, Although they've still got him on their bench. He's now the bench staff. Perfect. And uh, during their, during their um, first bout of the day, he was singing the national anthem complete with full pantomime acting out every line. And it was more than slightly entertaining. I think he won the crowd personally. I think all of Japan won the whole crowd this tournament. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Without a doubt, as soon as they skated out in the opening ceremony, they became the crowd favorite right away. Totally. With their, well, sort of artistic skating that they showed off. And yes. Well, well, everyone on the team is definitely a good skater. Right. Technically, they're all excellent skaters. They're awesome. And, uh, well, as we already said, they learned pretty much what derby is. Um, we just got a current score from the game on the roller derby city track usa versus scotland usa is leading with 265 points over scotland with a zero and uh, we have about less, less than four minutes left in the first period uh, i talked with the captain of scotland before that bout started and he stated that his goal was to score two well, because then. the scotland women scored one against usa <laughs> They've got to do better than the women. <laughs> that is a goal to set, and I mean, they <laughs> still have one complete half. Absolutely. To achieve that goal. And uh, if they go on and are unable to beat the USA, which is fairly likely, then they'll end up tomorrow playing against Wales, which would be a really fun bout to watch. Which would be a fun bout to watch, and I'm pretty sure, considering the crowd and the audience in here, that that <laughs> one is going to burn the hole down. Well, the Tartan Army certainly brought the noise this tournament, didn't they? They did. Totally. 
Well, it looks like we've progressed to um, equipment checks for teams Japan and Belgium. We will not be doing anthems for either of these teams today as they've already had their anthems played. Now, the winner of this bout progresses to the jug final. I believe we've said that, but we'll say it again. We'll say it again. And the loser is the first team done for the weekend. And uh, the winner will play against Team Sweden. That's right. Tomorrow at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Greenwich time. Greenwich time, which would be the 2 p.m. in Central European time. That's right. Or, let's see how good is my math, 9 a.m. Eastern time, U.S. Which would be for... For which cities? Just uh, New, New York, New Washington, York. Okay. Philadelphia. Okay, so for the early birds over at the East Coast. Yes. Thank you. Nine's not that early. Oh, it's Sunday. Yeah, come on. Man. It's Derby. So <laughs> everyone loves to get up for Derby, right? Without a weekends. doubt. On the weekends, of course. Well, I remember waking up quite early for the um, Australia-New Zealand bout, which was at a perfectly reasonable hour in Australia, which was a decidedly unreasonable hour of 3 a.m. in the U.S. So I, I actually woke up, watched the bout, and then went back to sleep, and then woke up at a reasonable time later. <laughs> at a reasonable time for the U.S. For the point. U.S., yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the growth of International Derby, folks. It's 24 hours. And... Uh, it's pretty fun every weekend to see when you open up your Facebook account that everyone's complaining that they can't get up during the week when their alarm rings. But as soon as it's Derby, they have no problems to rise at 6. No, no one has any problems when it's Derby. So. And over here, you're, you're a little bit more used to it, you know, because the most of Derby's from the U.S., at least up until recently. And now with the growth of Derby over here, American fans are starting to experience that, getting up early to um, watch Derby over here. And, and it looks like the head referee has signaled that we're ready for play. And we have the first lineup on the track for both teams. Well, we are lined up for the first jam, it looks like. Waiting for the referees to take the positions. And there's the five second warning, and the skaters are away. Both of them having to deal with a tough, tough four walls. Japan, wow, look at them, they're recycling. They are recycling, but they are actually losing the pack, that was about point. A uh, number R4, Mayuge Born Dai, almost got through, he got recycled, but he's on a power jam. He had gotten through, picked up lead jammer, and then called it off because he didn't want to be recycled and have to play that game. Yeah, apparently. But so, Japan is starting in a power jam now. No. So. So, we have Japan starting in a power jam, actually. Um, one blockers of each team on the box. Three on three pack, yep. And number one, U2 is out and scoring. He is your lead jammer. Let's see if Japan, no, oh, Japan throwing some full offense, trying to help U2 out. And U2 being blocked out of bounds. No, he sent off for forearms. Oh, darn. So that'll be a rotisserie in the penalty box. Which leads me to some interesting facts on the matchup between Belgium and Germany earlier this day. Um, very penalty heavy. Anyone who's seen it could confirm that. And we have a total of 103 penalties for that game. And Belgium has more than 50% of it with 54 penalties for Holy the whole team. Cow. Two foul outs. Now on the track, we've got number 1030, Track Vader. And the, we just heard a shout on the other track. Uh, that shout must have been Scotland getting a lead jammer. There's nothing else that that, that great scream could have been. 
But the score at the half is USA 315 to nothing for Scotland. Still one complete half left to score those two points. Absolutely. And meanwhile... There's yeah. a grand slam. A grand slam for Belgium. Track Vader, captain of the team, coach of the Brussels Derby Pixies. Ah, I did not know that. And oh, nice recycle the job inside. there by Japan. But as you can just see, they still lose the pack when they're recycling to the back. But still. Four points for you, too. He's quite happy about that. And Japan fighting in the front to keep the jammer as long as possible. Oh, great offense there by the Japanese blockers. That was a pretty easy pass there for you, too. Next up, we have a full lineup. For Team Japan. Now there's one player still seated in the box. That's right. It's going to be a four on three pack, but both jammers out there. There's the cue. Little jammer on jammer, RG Bargy there at the back of the pack. Great driving block by number 10, 10, Niels on wheels. And number 3MT, Bulldog, is taking the lead jammer. And not only that, it'll be on a, is it on a power jam? Yep, zero being sent to the box, on the way to the box. That's right, and 136 Zoro for Japan, their jammer is on his way to the penalty box. Three and T, Bulldog with a grand slam for Belgium. Now again, a three wall in front. Very tight three wall now. It's so tight that number four got called on a high block. Well, that's one of those skills that Japan have learned over the course of this tournament, is how to run those walls. Yeah, and apparently they can skate backwards. Yes, they can. Oh. <laughs> he just beat both of them. Japan now in the back and taking Bulldog to the outside. A little bit of recycling there. And following after, now we have three Belgian blockers back on track. Bulldog is taking one more round. He's being signaled from his bench to take another pass. Well, the Japanese jammer, Zoro, is still on his initial pass. Yeah, and... Oh, wow. He finished that pass in style. And there's the jammer helmet cover pass to Mayuge Borndai. And there's an official timeout. So um, we have an Instagram account for the tournament. As you might have figured out, look us up on Instagram under MRDWC. Share your photos of yourself enjoying the cup wherever you are, and they might it make it onto the stream. We've seen a few of them, actually. We've seen a few of them. We've had a few shout outs during the tournament on the stream from people all over the world. All right, well, we're at it. Let's talk about uh, GBEMS, the medical team for this tournament. They are, believe it or not, a roller derby specialist medical team. They all have derby names. They show up to bouts all across the country here. Um, they are UKRDA approved. UKRDA endorsed is the technical term. And some of them are even involved in derby themselves. That's right as referees, as skaters. And uh, speaking of which, one of them is making their way to the bench. That's right. Um, apparently there was a call for the medic at the conclusion of that jam. I'm not sure if that was a jam called off for medical reason or not. But Good. nonetheless, we have 
a medic out there at the on Belgian, the bench. On the Belgian bench? Yes. Player is patiently waiting on the track while a track monkey is still sweeping out the ref lane. Apparently, there's still some problems with a dirty floor over here. And the official timeout is called over. The ref's taking the position, skate is lining up again. All right, there's the warning. We're about to get back into Derby. And we have two Japanese blockers left on the track. They're playing Bulldog Roller Derby right there. It's pretty much five on one. And uh, five of four, Jaramanez made his initial pass through the park. It's declared lead jammer. Oh, but Mayuge Bordai called for a uh, four arms. So he's on his way to the penalty box. Again. That would be the Roller Derby City penalty box over there. Roller Derby City, Europe's largest supplier of Roller Derby kit and merch. And we have somebody on Twitter saying, come on, Japan. And we'll just repeat that for you on the feed. Come on, come Japan. Come on, Japan. From Twitter. From We're still Twitter, of course. As All right, always. here we come for another another pass. Jaramines taking another five points. You know, Japan might be losing this bout right now, but they sure are winning the uniform game, aren't they? The uniform game and definitely the crowd sympathy. Oh. Although I think right at the moment more people are over on the other track watching the USA. Oh, sure. It's still a bit quiet over here. But everybody over here who's not a Belgian is, is pretty much cheering for Japan right yes. now. <laughs> <laughs> and the Japanese Gemma is back on track and Sharominus calls the jam off. The Belgian fans are much more quiet than in the morning when Belgium was playing Germany. <laughs> well, Belgium-Japan is not a, not a local rivalry, you know? That's right, of course. And now we have two full lineups back on track. That was a great atmosphere, though, for the Belgium-Germany bout. It was. And it was funny to see that like all the audience was in uh, black, red, and green. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And we, this looks very oh. good. Japan is One to beat, lead jam. We have lead jammer for Japan. Number one, that's U2, is lead jammer for Japan. And there we have Murduck coming out of the pack for Belgium. Murduck, according to some people, is how you pronounce this tournament, but U2 sent off for a forearms penalty. Did he take any points before that? I'm I not sure. I think he would have. In all likelihood, he would have, but they don't signal it until either the jam or the penalty ends, whichever comes first. Right. And there we have a no pass, no penalty for Murdoch. So he only takes four points instead of five. It's helpful and that they signal that. Jam. Yes, that's right. Um, Murdoch is through the park again, taking five points. This time a grand slam for Murdoch. Oh, and Japan did it. They, they forced him into the cutting penalty. That they was perfect. The did learn quite a bit. The recycle job did its job. That was beautiful. Totally. So we have the Japanese jammer, YouTube back on track. And so I, oh. jumping the apex, <laughs> taking five points to the scoreboard perfect for Japan. Little apex jump there for you too. And the crowd is cheering. And oh, definitely. Now he's fighting, pushing to the front and taking five more points. And now finally the crowd is waking up after the lunchtime sleep. That's, that's a Japanese team highlight right there. Definitely. The recycle job to generate that cut track penalty and then that apex jump. Both of those, I, I want to hear them on the Japanese feed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
Of course, sitting right next to us is a commentator speaking in what I can only assume is beautiful Japanese. It sounds beautiful to me. It's a, the, the, the sound of the language, the tone and the... But well, to finish this power jam, we have Zoro out there on the track. With hair like an NFL player. And what was the penalty? It was a direction of gameplay, I believe, on one of the Belgian blockers. Well, Zoro is forced to recycle. Here he comes again. One to beat. He yep. is through. He is scoring. Now, let's he is see leading. if they see the jammer coming back to the track. Murdoch behind the Japanese wall, and Zoro calls the jam off. And we have another shout out from Twitter from. Knappy03, I do love Japan, but sorry guys, my heart belongs to the Belgian guys. <laughs> well, well, that's good roller derby right there. If you can't choose a team to cheer for. And just cheer for both of them. Exactly, then just cheer for good derby. We've had some great derby this weekend, haven't we? I guess one of my favorite bouts this tournament was uh, Canada on Wales. Oh, that was so hard-hitting. Exciting and hard and beautiful, beautiful to watch. That's Niels on wheels with lead jam status out there. And we have uh, R2, is that right, as Jenna for Japan, but Niels calls the jam off. No points going either way on that one. That Canada-Wales bout, I talked to um, the captain of Canada afterward and asked him what he thought about it, and he said this was his favorite bout because the Canadian guys hit him hard, the Welsh guys hit him hard, made him really work. They felt like they had to work for every point. They had to, at least it looked like that. Even though it was a high score line, they felt like that was the best, the best competition they had yes. had. And it was amazing to watch for the audience. Definitely. And we have again lead jammer for Japan. And they are still holding the Belgian jammer. And they're number 101. Wimplash made it out of the pack. And here comes U2. He's on his scoring run. He's got a little hop, skip, and a jump. Did he call it off? He hasn't called it off. He's still skating. He's still scoring. Now he calls it off. He picks up four. But I think his opponent got two. That's right. Yeah, two points. He didn't have his timing. It, these are just those little things that yep. the more derby you watch, the more you expect everyone to know. But at some point, U2 had to learn when you call off a jam. Watch the other jammer, where's the other jammer? Has he completed the initial pass? Yet? Exactly. Which is why Zoro called that other one early, because the other jammer had come out of the penalty box and thus had not completed yep. his initial pass. So the next jam is on. We have both jammers in the back of the pack, fighting hard and... Zoro's lead, but he's fallen down, so he's been recycled without leaving the pack. Now, this is where uh, uh, most derby... Oh, there he goes. He knew to call it right there. This is that learning curve we're talking about. This is a learning curve, and he just called it in a right moment before the Belgian Jammer jumped the apex. That's right. It was very, very close, but not... It was just enough time to not get him the points. There's the five second warning for this one. Oh, a little bit of jammer on jammer behind the jammer line. They're both fighting forward. I think I see you two out there. That is. No, it's my Yuge born die. Both jammers with one to beat. And my Yuge born die called to the cut track. He is off. Kneels on wheels on a power jam now. Well, see, here's a confused fan. He's got the Belgian hat on and the Ninja Pan Rollers t-shirt. But I'm wondering where he got the black Ninja Pan Rollers t-shirt from because everyone else is only running around in white shirts. Well, the white shirts were the bigger sellers. I think they only had a few of the black shirts. Oh, okay. Here's a grand slam for Niels on Wheels. And the Japanese still holding him in front of the pack. That's right. Good walling by Japan, but Niels on Wheels worked hard and got his way through that one. Good walling plus uh, the bridging is still missing. 
That's another point about the learning curve. Yes. Another five points for Niels on wheels in his power jam. I think I just heard someone from the audience shout bridge. I'm just not too sure about that with the hot fans. <laughs> it's great to hear the audience supporting both teams, you know. Here we go. Mayuge Bondai is through. Pack, Pack warning their jammer. Kneels on wheels to call it off. There he goes. So he should pick up. There he goes. All four points on that jam, on that pass. 24 points on the power jam. Not too bad for Kneels on wheels. That's right. And there's a timeout called by the Ninja Pan Rollers. And Belgium just hit the... Uh, the 100 points mark. That's right. 102 to 22 for Belgium. And this time out will be brought to you by Quad Skate Shop, Europe's original brick and mortar roller derby equipment supplier. Quad Roller Skate Shop has the largest selection and most stock of any store on the continent. With excellent consultation services only a fellow skater could provide, we've got all your needs covered. We love this game. We have an excellent line for Team Belgium. There's only two blockers, two more in the box, one of them already standing. This is the, what's next to last bout of the afternoon on this track. Got right. one more yet to go. Uh, and after. that next one will be Netherlands versus Finland. On the quad skate shop track. No. Next up, we have Germany versus Ireland on uh, the roller derby city track. And after that, we'll have uh, Finland versus the Netherlands on this track. And the team timeout was turned into an official timeout. And I've just gotten confirmation on that injury. It's Bubble from Japan, who's injured right over by the scoreboard. Then when the medics were... Uh, That's why the medics were called out. And that's why we've moved from a team timeout to an official, team timeout. official timeout. But he is up and standing. We've removed one skate, but he's standing. He's going to be taken off and seen to by the GBEMS team. They provide event medical cover and ambulance transport all over the UK. And, and a large number of roller derby events. Especially love to do it for roller derby, right? Remember, have you been enjoying the live feed uh, for yesterday and today? We would be glad if you could drop us a few quid using the link on the broadcast page. The split will be 50-50 between us, which is the MRDWC and the team's travels funds. That's right. We're glad to bring this coverage to you free of charge. But, of course, we do have costs to make it. I've enjoyed bringing this feed to you. I'm Honestly, having... I enjoyed the whole time setting this feed up figuring out who's going to broadcast it, how it's going to be broadcast. This is a lot of fun. Statsman was doing an awesome job. Thank you. So it turns out that Bubble needed to serve a penalty when he got injured. So number 32, Ikage Soriaru, is substituted in for Bubble in the penalty box. And number three, NT for Belgium, Bulldog, his lead jammer, but he is a shadow, and that shadow is you too. And he just leveled him. Out. Oh. And taking the apex, beautiful action. And, and Olaf is calling the jam <laughs> with a 
with a nut of his shoulders. Bulldog doesn't know how he conceded four points right there, even though he was lead jammer. I think he didn't really expect that one. No, that was great jamming by you too. Oh yes, and the crowd really appreciated it right over here. So which brings us to 26 points for Japan. It's always nice when the exciting things happen right in front of you. Yeah. There's the five second warning and they're off. And there we have Track Vader jamming for Team Belgium. And one of the Belgian blockers was just set off, but Belgium still has three on the track. Japan with two. Oh, Zoro being hard to hit. But here comes Track Vader. He's only got two to beat. No pack. Full Grand Slam for Track Vader. Oh, and Zoro. Zoro with a little juke to the inside goes out. In his initial pass, um, Track Vader hitting the pack again. Turning around the Japanese blockers and then calls it off. Beautiful spin move there. Yes, it was over the inside line around the Japanese blockers. Next up, jamming. That's the only problem with this table location. It's a little bit hard to see who's jamming. R4, which is uh, Mayuri Bondai yes. for Japan. And uh, we have 101 uh, Wimplash for Belgium. You know, it's impressive that Japan have been able to maintain a two jammer rotation, or and three jammer rotation. A three jammer rotation and a successful first initial pass for Mayuri Bondai which makes him lead jammer, and he's hitting the pack now. His blockers switch to some offense play. He passes the blockers, calls the jam off, and Belgium can only score one point. Belgium event. scored two, I'm Two sorry. points. And yeah. I believe that's four to Japan. Should be, yeah. Penalty to Belgium on the blocker. It was a multiplayer block. I did not see who was sent off. Me neither, but... Um, up to now, they're better on the penalties than in the game against Germany. They're doing much better, yes. Japanese blocker number one, year two, taking a hard hit, but still taking lead, followed by 24 Phantom of Team Belgium. Oh, he went for an apex jump. He doesn't land it. He made contact with both skates off the ground. So that's a misconduct major penalty. So he's on his way to the penalty box for a misconduct. So that was a gutsy maneuver. Yes, Phantom on the way to the back of the pack where he's being recycled. And he did recycle, but he picked up a no pass, no point. On number four, Rio Chin. But there's a five-point grand slam in it for Phantom. And to Belgium, back with all four blockers now. And Phantom send off track for a cutting penalty. So we'll have a we'll have a um, jammer revolving rotation. door. Jammer whack-a-mole in the penalty box. <laughs> and uh, there we have uh, U2 back on track. And his block is apparently switching to offense mode. Well, they've gone into a passive out. offense now. And there he's through. Five points for Japan. He's got to recycle. He's got a little bit of offensive help. Let's see what they do. Jam reaches its natural conclusion. He still picks up two, three points. And three Japan points can still start it in a power jam. So apparently this is Phantom's uh, second major tournament here as he played as part of the Expendables at the MBRDC last summer, the Men's Euros. 
That one I didn't know. Well, the Expendables were that mixed team that yep. evolved, and this time it involved a bunch of uh, continental Europeans as well. Because, of course, the men's game is growing over on the other side of the channel. There was, among others, there was, exam for example, Skate and Smooth, who was uh, skating in those lovely hot pans in the morning against <laughs> Team Belgium, and he was on the Expandables as well. Well, we haven't seen Braveheart on the track lately. He has those famous short shorts. And there, speaking of Phantom, he has Lee Jam status. And uh, Japanese Jammer still fighting in the back. So Zoro decides to recycle. M36, Zoro. He might want to watch out. That uh, Jammer helmet cover is a little loose. Which reminds me of the first game of Japan when the Gemma lost the cover. I didn't realize it and didn't skated an entire pass. Without realizing that he lost the cover and the crowd was telling him the to pick up the cover again. That's the thing I love about this crowd is they're so into supporting all of the teams. And apparently it's 4-12 um, to nothing with nine minutes remaining or nine no, no, minutes no. into the second period over on the Roller Derby City track with USA whitewashing Scotland so far. That's a British term for it. I would say shutout. We call it a clean sheet. Blow it. Yep, there you go. Steamroll. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, this is, this is reasonable expectations in Roller Derby. You don't skate against USA expecting to win. You skate against USA expecting to score. To score to two score. points, one point. Well, and Wales' goals against uh, Canada were to just show up and have a great bout, which yes. they did. They did, but they scored. Right. And, um, and not too Wales shabby. against USA. They scored against USA. They scored against USA. That's with right. uh, I think they did like 30 points against the US. That's right. No, it was 17 points against the US. So uh, here's lead jam to R4, Mayuge Born Dai. And look at that stats. Holy uh, coming cow. in some statistics, we have at the moment 2,200 viewers on the live stream Hello. and 30 people watching the Japanese language feed brought to you by uh, Quaddy, I think it is. Yep, Bobby Quads is calling in Japanese over there. And see, that's one of the great features. Roller Derby is an international sport now. It's really a global game, and we are so proud to be able to bring you guys coverage in two languages per bout. At the time. It's it's about time for it, to be honest. Definitely. Weren't you announcing as well in a foreign language yesterday? Yes, I was. I covered about in Welsh, Against which is definitely not my first language. Uh, uh, Wales versus Welsh, Finland. Finland in Welsh. See yes. You. That was fun. And you're announcing in a second language now, aren't you? I'm announcing in my second language. <laughs> 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 and again, we have lead jammer for Team Japan. And, and the, the Japanese jammers skater is down. Whistled dead by the officials. So, awkwardly, the medics tending to bubble now have to go tend to somebody else. All right, somebody posting, it's that time, Belgium versus Japan. Thanks to casual banter. I think that's on Instagram. I'm not. Thank you. Thank you. That is on Instagram. The tournament's on Instagram. I'm personally not. So if you hand me the app, I'll go. That's on a phone. <laughs> uh, that's right. So we're bringing this tournament in two languages per bout. Uh, that took a little bit of work setting up, but you know the idea came almost 12 months ago that that should happen. And, uh, oh, he's upstanding. It looks like um, DJ Jack is being taken off the floor. And the crowd, again, cheering for Japan. Now that the drum was, Team Japan, Team Japan, Team Japan. I think Japan. they're actually chanting DJ Jack. I think you're right. You're right. Yeah, I think they're chanting his name. Jack. They're cheering for him. Well, now that the jam was whistled out, he has to sit out three jams, at least, um, depending on his injury. 
And uh, we have the next lineup on track. Four, three Japanese blockers on two Belgian blockers. Very small pack here on this jam. And, and wow. Japan taking the lead again. Number one, U2. Doing by an excellent job sneaking by the inside of that wall. Followed by Bulldog, but U2 is already again in the front of the pack and has already passed two blockers and is taking the points and calling off the jam. Absolutely. Takes four, concedes, uh, looks like two to his opponent. Two for Belgium. Still two Belgian blockers on the box and one more Japanese blocker. Now we have a two on two pack. Jam has started. Absolute um, micro pack out there. Lead for Belgium for Wimplash, number 101. Great job by Japan of gaming the pack definition there. Yep. So they've, they've really learned that much. Yep. I can't wait to see them in the next Men's World Cup. Yeah. And I guess by then they will have a bigger team as well. Well, Argentina said that after coming here with eight and doing, they're still in the tournament. Yes, they Argentina are. Argentina are still in the hunt for a trophy here at the Men's World Cup with eight skaters. Their last bout, their, their last bout, they were against France and they were down to five skaters and still fighting hard against France. And so tomorrow, uh, they're going to meet Australia at 9 a.m. Greenwich time. So 10 o'clock Central European time. And oh, I don't morning. even want to do the math for Australia. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Set your alarm, <laughs> mates. <laughs> you do that so well. Sorry. A uh, German doing an Aussie accent. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, and uh, we have another official timeout. Uh, we have about, we have three and a half minutes left on the clock. In the first half. First half, uh, 147 points for Belgium on 47 points for Japan. And official timeout is over. We're waiting for the whistle to start the next jam. Three and two blockers in advantage of Belgium. And chance for Belgium right before the whistle. And Japan sneaking cow. over the inside line. U2 taking lead jammer. That was awesome. Murdoch following right behind. This is a shadow situation. Belgium doing their best to conserve points. Not, oh, great takeout. And I, he calls the jam off, but still not quite in time. No, that's to looks avoid. Like it's going to be a two to four score line on that one. But again, Belgium not getting all the points. Only three, not four points for no personal penalty. Lining up again. Lining up again, it's still a small pack. Uh, two for Japan, three for Belgium. The two for Japan make their weight belt and get Mayuge born die through for lead jam status. He has a shadow, though, and the shadow's name is Track Vader. And Sima Yugi learned <laughs> and called the jam off. We have a lovely handshake on the track. Track <laughs> Vader there tried to give him a hug <laughs> and almost pulled him over. <laughs> See, that's the derby love right there. Is that a forearms? <laughs> <laughs> Illegal procedure, too much love. <laughs> And uh, just like at the end of the Argentina bout, when one of the Argentine skaters sk uh, was sent out, he left the track in tears, and two Frenchmen in the stands grabbed him and hugged him. Derby love all now over the place. Trick or threat as lead jammer. And just now is U2 from Japan responding by getting out of the pack. And the Japanese, after leaving through, So it's another four points for Belgium. One and a half minutes left on the watch. So I guess we'll have one more jam, maybe two in this halftime. Probably time. one, I would think, before, before halftime. 
been fun being here this first half, hasn't it? This is a good battle. <laughs> it has been, yeah. <laughs> The problem with, with what I do at this tournament is it's hard to watch Derby all the way through. And, uh, oh, there's Lee Jam to Murdoch. Murdoch for Belgium. And uh, you two still fighting in front of the pack. On the ground and up again, up against three Belgian blockers. You two jamming like Chumbawamba. Get knocked down and get back up again, right? <laughs> That's the point about Derby, right? <laughs> Stand up, skate on. And you two made his initial pass. USA are now up 5-11 to 0 with 13 minutes left. But another big roar there from the Scots faithful, so. Probably lead gem status for Scotland. I really want to see the stats on that one. How many leads did Scotland get against USA? And uh, we have another lineup on the track. But. And will we get this jam in? Now there's less time on the clock than the uh, lineup time has. That's so. right. But it's a one second difference. Yeah. Jam timer there shaking, the rolling shaking whistle. the hat, yep. rolling whistle coming up. And the referee is trying to wave everyone off. No, 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 no. See you again in 20 minutes. Exactly. We are heading over to adverts in a moment. That's right. We're going to throw it back to the studio, let you guys see some upcoming roller derby events, as well as get a word from our sponsors. And I've been enjoying this coverage. And we'll be back in 20 minutes. Now, before the first half ended, we did have a skater sent to the penalty box for a two-minute penalty. For a uh, delay of game. For well, delay of he game. He got one penalty, and apparently he didn't line up for the next jam, and so he got a second minute for the delay of game. And that was number 77 for Japan. Um, I believe that's Umesan who picked up that penalty. Yep. And there, oh, man, the roars from the other track. But here comes a roar from this track as Trick or Threat picks up lead jam status for Belgium. Our four Mayugi born guy makes his initial pass as Trick or Threat jumps past the pack in his first scoring pass, whistling the jam bed. And it looks like uh, the two injured skaters, um, D DJ Jack and Bubble, are both on their way to hospital to get checked out which leaves uh, Team Japan with uh, nine skaters, when I'm correctly. That's right. So, we're getting ready for the next jam. And uh, we have... It's you lead. two trying, but... Lead for Meals on Wheels, number 1010, and you two... Fighting in the front, making his way over the inside. Niels on wheels, hitting the pack again. Gonzi tried to put a heavy hit on Niels, but he just spun his way around that contact. Picked up four points, calls off the jam. And meanwhile, we have some pretty good news from the Roller Derby City track. Wow. Apparently, Scotland managed to score and now sit back and hold on to your chest 35 <laughs> points well, against the USA. As I said, their initial goal was two, and then the captain told me that if we can get two, we want to shoot for 14, so there's one for each of us. <laughs> and now they're on 35. 35, 40 points, 40 points. going up. Holy cow. And again in this jam, we have lead for Belgium, Bulldog jamming this time. <clears throat> Japanese jammer taken to the infield. That's U2 who was dropped back. U2, oh, nice offensive help for U2 to get him out. And Bulldog hits the pack again. Taken out to the infield and calls the jam off. All right, so that's a final score now. 40 points for Scotland on 50, 557 for the USA. Holy cow, that is a win for the Scots. 40 points to 557. 
Next lineup on the track. We have two Belgian blockers defending their points on three Japanese blockers. You know, for Scott's roller derby, that's a where were you moment. Where were you when Scotland scored 40? And Ooh, pretty looking jump. 88. Trigger thread, jumping the apex again before cooling off. Yep, just getting that score confirmed, 557 to 40. That's, that's incredible. You know, Derby's a strange game where we see a scoreline of 557 to 40 and celebrate it as a success for the team with 40. But I think that's the beauty of roller derby, too. Of course. I mean, everybody came over to learn. And if you score 40 points against a team as the USA, I mean, we've all seen the skaters this weekend. They're fucking football players on, on roller skates. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, it'd be, it'd be the same in football if you put the um, local U16s up against Bayern Munich. And they managed yeah. to go 10 to, you know, one. One, yeah. If and you'd say, oh, one. the one. We yeah, got one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And it looks like we're lining up for our next jam. And here comes the big crowd to support the short-sighted Japan now that the other bout has ended. Maybe we get the energy of the Scottish people over here to the track. The Tartan Army is pretty much the best cheering section in this tournament. And we have lead jammer for U2 for Japan. Oh, nice little hop, skip and a jump. U2 is through. Beautiful apex jump. Uh, Murdoch in the back. And he cuts Being the track. Called on a cutting penalty. Now maybe we can get a couple more points for Japan. Not quite, because U2 was called for a back block. So the jammer switcheroo is going to happen very, very quickly this time. Plus, we'll have a full two-minute jam now. That's correct. Mm, thanks for pointing that one out. <laughs> um, Japan lining up, trying to get to the front of the pack. I don't think the Japanese jammer even sat down. No. I mean, the rules state that he has to sit down, but as soon as he sits, he's told to stand because he's under 10 seconds. <laughs> and... Oh, what a Making bash. His way out of the pack, four points for Japan. And Murdoch again at the back of the pack. Murdoch got four on his pass right out of the right out of the pack. As well. And uh, Japan Ooh. has a huge advantage that uh, U2 only has to fight two blockers, while Murdoch is stuck with all four. Although one is just being called off the track That's for right. a multiplayer block. Don Z is being called off for multiplayer. And YouTube tries to call the jam, but... He forgot that he lost lead. Or maybe he honestly didn't know that he'd lost lead, but this is what I love about people learning the game. He tried to call it off, and rather than get upset that it hadn't been called, he just, just recycled. Like, he just went on. Call it off. Oh, that didn't work. Okay. Go to the back, start again. And the jam is over in a second. Yep, there both we of go. them. Four points for both jammers. <laughs> and you two celebrating with the crowd over there. You know, this is the wonderful thing about, again, I, I just want to come back to those two teams, Japan and Argentina, who traveled all this way. And really, some of the teams brought fan support. Those two just logistically couldn't. Yes. And so they found their own fan support here. Yes. And so the locals are willing to adopt them as their team because they need love too. Yeah. And it worked. And uh, this tournament is so happening again. Team Japan is like the Jamaican Bob. 100%. <laughs> this is cool rollings instead of cool runnings. <laughs> <laughs> so the comment from Snow Peep, Team Japan is like the Jamaican bobsled team. <laughs> that, no, that's exactly it. They just need the cool little rhyme. <laughs> it's a nice comparison. 
And now the crowd's encouraging him to call it before the Belgian skater. Oh, but he it's now a power jam because the Belgian jammer was called for a forearms penalty. Yes, on his way off the track. The crowd was trying to encourage uh, Zorro to call off the jam, but he didn't notice in time. And just as he was calling it off, there had been a forearms penalty. But, well, now Japan is starting in a power jam. That's right. Which isn't too bad because they're left with two blockers on the track. And uh, we have an official timeout being called. Official timeout. Probably looks like they're going over to talk to the score trackers. So who's this official timeout brought to us by? Uh, Green Monster Roller Sports. All new visitors today on greenmonster.com. Don't forget to leave all the vowels out of the word, otherwise you will be redirected or won't be redirected. <laughs> I have no idea, to be honest. There's got to be some <laughs> language in which an R counts as a vowel. R. Just like in Welsh, W and Y are vowels. Yes, although, well, linguistically speaking, a W is a semi-vowel and well, not a vowel. <laughs> no, no, but in Welsh, the W makes an oo sound. Yeah, that's right. So even though it, it in any other spelling, that, that letter does not make that sound, but in Welsh, it's, it's actually a vowel. That's right. Same with Y. Y is always a vowel in Welsh. That's right. But I is only sometimes a vowel in Welsh. Oh, you have that weird spelling as well, right? Yeah, and if that doesn't yeah. confuse you enough, <laughs> every double letter means something even sillier. All right, so White113 had left the penalty box early, this just did, and so was issued a penalty box violation. Because of that, I'm assuming he was assessed the extra minute for the violation. That's just been confirmed. So thank you for that. It's always helpful to have somebody extra to help you when those kind of awkward situations happening. And it looks like the Twitter feed is absolutely blowing up about this bout. That's wonderful. I just have uh, Beck Wise here. How about this? Feel the rhythm, feel the side, get on up, it's derby time. <laughs> in Japan. <laughs> All of them. Feel the rhythm, out. feel the rhyme, get on up, it's derby time. I love it. <laughs> the, the thing is, I'd love to share that with them, but I have the concern that you'd have to sit them down and say, okay, we're gonna watch this film. And trust me, at the end of it, we'll explain why we had to watch. <laughs> now, the funny story is I actually didn't, I've never watched Cool Runnings in my life yeah. until I flew over for this tournament. And it was on the, the screen there on the play. And I'm like, ah, oh, I haven't seen Cool Runnings. I should see Cool Runnings. Now I'm so glad. <laughs> that you did because you got it. Okay. <laughs> because Cool Runnings made. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> OK, the official timeout is over. So it looks like we're about ready for some more roller derby. Just over 20 minutes left on the clock. But you can see that thanks to the uh, lovely scoreboard overlay we now have. Ah, White 136 had an illegal call-off penalty. So uh, he, tried, he called off the penalty, the jam successfully without wearing his helmet cover. So this will go as a power jam. Um, to we Belgium, but it was a double power jam. So we started to jam without jammer. For 10 seconds, as I recall. And now we oh. have him on the box again for an illegal procedure. Yes, so he re-entered illegally, and that'll be a full one minute power jam after a confusing start to Belgium. And if that makes sense, I've got a bridge I can sell you in Florida. <laughs> Well, so we have number 88, uh, Trick of Thread, jamming for Belgium as the lead jammer, taking five points. And the Japanese two blockers struggling with the Belgian blockers. They're doing their best, but the Belgians have figured out exactly how to play offense yes. against those two Japanese. Let's see if it makes a difference with three. Yes, it very much does. He just slowed down. And the fourth is coming back on track. Gan Z is back. That's a good name. I like that Gan one. Gan Z. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a pun, but it's just fun to say. Gan yeah. Z. <laughs> There's another grand slam for the Belgians. 
Of course, as we've said, uh, the winner advances to the jug final tomorrow to play Sweden. What did we say against Sweden, right? And the loser is done for is the done tournament. For today. Not just for today, but they would be the, the first team eliminated in this that tournament. Is, that is right. And, uh, and the jam um, was called up by Team Belgium just when the Japanese jammer entered the track again. That's correct. Team Japan, ha ha ha, there you go. Tokyo Roller Girls are super proud of you. You're doing great, you can do it. And the same note from Twitter is just being handed over to <laughs> our Japanese feed. Bobby Quads needs to pass that along to Japan. Unfortunately, a back block. Oh, double jammer penalties. Back block and forearms to Japan and Belgium, respectively. So they're both going to head to the penalty box. We're going to have exceedingly short power jams. Uh, the first one just ended. And Peg is reorganizing. And there is. And there's the second one over. Jer Omenez stuck on the Japanese wall. And see Japan figured the bridging stuff out. Jerome has declared no lead. Well, that's right, because they had both um, served time in the penalty box, this jam. So there is no lead jammer. This one's going the full two minutes. Both teams down a blocker now. Belgium wall in the front. Mayugi Bondai. Managed nice little spin pass move. The wall. Right. We already noticed that they are good skaters, per se. But they are excellent technical skaters. And it's great seeing them come together as <laughs> doing things like that. And it wasn't just an apex jump, it was an apex jump with offensive support. <laughs> uh, now we have some jammer and jammer action on the track. Oh, too bad. Takes a spill. There's a full four-point pass for Geronimus. 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 And it looks like Mayugi Bordai is getting a bit tired. Um, Geronimus falls in turn three. I think they're both getting a little bit tired, but for the Japanese, it makes sense. They're skating with only eight. Yes, that's right. You're probably skating two or three jams on and then yeah. one off. Yeah. That is tiring, especially if you have to push walls um, out of the power jam. Absolutely. And uh, someone just got stuck on the sideline of the track. <laughs> <laughs> I think the tape was up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> the tape's supposed to go the other way. I hope they told the track repair sticky, people. Sticky side to the ground. Sticky side down. <laughs> Here we go, official timeout. Okay, um, it looks like one of the... Um, Japanese skaters. Yumizan number seven is about to fall out and we'll take a short official timeout because um, we need to put in a translator to explain the situation. That's right. Um, this is one of the difficulties of International Roller Derby is sometimes you need a translator to explain these things. And the, the referees explaining using hand signals to Ume-san that he had seven. The crowd's applauding him now as he leaves the track. And they needed the translator as well for the medics. For the medics. And uh, I think that's uh, the only team on the tournament that is allowed to have an extra person on the bench. Actually, any team can have a person not on the bench. Uh, the any team is allowed to have an official interpreter. They, they are not allowed to sit on the bench and bench manage. They have to sit somewhere off the bench that's designated to the officials. So they usually sit over at the NSO table. But they're allowed to, to enter the game at any uh, any point needed. Any point needed to be the interpreter. And Umesan is the captain of Japan. So now they're going to have to redesignate a new alternate to speak for him. And that's probably being explained to them right now. Yes. That's one of those finicky rules that generally a referee in an NSO will know. And probably on the team, no one, no one would. You'd think of it. You Only in the it. moment, but you yeah. wouldn't necessarily know off the top of your head. You yeah. see what I mean? Yeah. 
And I mean, that's one of the things that you didn't really learn when, you, when, you're, uh, when you're a skater and you have to take your rules test. That's one exactly. of the things you read through the rules and you read it once, but it's not one of the things that you try to remember because apparently it won't show up in a rules test if you're taking one. It very rarely does. Now we're gonna go ahead and say that this uh, extended official timeout is brought to you by the MRDA. The Men's Roller Derby Association would like to wish all of the teams competing in the Men's Roller Derby World Cup the best of luck this weekend. The MRDA is the international governing body for men's flat track roller derby and wants you to join them in the growing world of men's roller derby. For more information about joining and the benefits of being part of the MRDA, visit them at mensrollerderbyassociation.com or send inquiries to info at mensrollerderbyassociation.com. Now, we're this is an extended official timeout, partially because of the language barrier. Probably. I, I know mean, that some of um, them have extended with um, Argentina as well. Some of them have extended. Um, most of the other teams speak beautiful English. I mean, it's the unfortunate fact about being an English-speaking tourist in Europe. You can pretty much go anywhere <laughs> and be okay. Apart from France, maybe. <laughs> Actually, I was staying in a beautiful little mountain town in Italy where only one restaurant had a server that spoke English. Wow. All the other ones, it was Sono Italiano. Wow. And uh, we went into a market to buy groceries. And we buy our groceries, and the woman is just pointing at things, and we're just pointing at things. And then we go to check out, and she says, thank you. And we said, oh, you speak beautiful English. And she, goes, she just gestures and says, no, 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 Sono thank you. That's all she knows, only thank you. <laughs> but that's how I learned my Spanish. I don't know any Spanish except for all the food. There you go. Because when I went shopping on the market, no one knew English. Sure. So I had to learn numbers, basic numbers, and all the food and vegetable stuff. That makes sense. I mean, that's the first Welsh I learned, actually, was numbers, because Cardiff Central has the announcements in Welsh first and then in English. And if you listen to the announcements in Welsh, you will go to your train before you can if you only speak English. Now, another Japan injury has happened. So the head ref has explained that one more foul out and the game will end due to the safety concerns of having so few skaters. Uh, if my math is correct, then Japan are down to uh, seven at this moment, or this could possibly be six. We had so uh, this is pretty, well, we can count it. They are down to... Um, Three people on the track. Two one in the box. Standing in a box, one seated in a box. And one on the bench. So that's six, six skaters. Six skaters, right. Wow, it is beast mode time for Japan. And now uh, we and have lead jammer status for Belgium. Bulldog. And another penalty being called this time on a Belgian blocker. Yes. And now we have the Japanese jammer, number one U2, back on track. And uh, Bulldog calls the jam. And we'll reset. I'm sure Japan are starting to get thankful for that 30 second clock in between jams. Well, at least the lineup managing is fairly easy now. Yeah, well, for that's the rest, certainly uh, true. For the remainder of the game. I remember coaching about where we had 11 and we felt like we were short staffed. <laughs> well, we ended up using our timeouts just to change lineups. Yeah. I used an official review to question nothing just so that I could rest my lineups. And it looks like. I'm not sure who they're cheering for because I can't understand the chant. But there's a quite a loud cheer going on right now. And uh, Gonzi, I think, is jamming. Yes, Gon. Or, no. no, Zoro. Zoro is Zoro's jamming. jamming for Japan. And, and I believe that's. Is that Niels on Wheels? Yes, it is. Uh, 1010, Niels on Wheels, right? That's a good name. Yes. That's a really good name. And it takes uh, five points, four points before calling the jam. Looks like Japan is now just rotating the jammers. Well, that's what you're going to have to. You, if you needed to set this up systematically, you'd set some kind of rotation. So you block 
you jam, you, jam, you rest, attack. you block, yeah. you jam. So you block several jams in a row, and then you jam once and rest. Yeah. And then you block some more. And here we go, lead jam actually goes to U2. Even though he's not ahead, he's gonna go jammer on jammer. He is not done. And me, not me as a wheels. Oh, Murdoch is recycled to the back. And Great recycle job. They sort of managed the bridging thing. Greenpeace would be happy. That was great recycling. <laughs> and the I like that line. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of stupid puns. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Part of the fun in roller derby. <laughs> Definitely. So just under 14 minutes to go. A six skater Japan taking on a full sized team Belgium. And we have uh, oh. a jammer being sent off track. The Belgian jammer, 404. Jeromenes for a forearms. And lead jam goes to Zoro. So. Zoro coming over the outside line and fighting in the front, turning around the blockers, the crowd going course, wild. If he knows about Zoro, there is a chance he knows about cool runnings. So it'd be <laughs> worth a shot. <laughs> and another five points on Team Japan, which Hits the 100 point mark, 104 <laughs> points for Japan. And he checked the star on his helmet because he, does, he doesn't want to make, <laughs> see this is the thing, they don't ever want to make the same mistake again. Yeah. And that's why Japan are doing better and better and better. Yeah. That's why they're cool runnings, because they're yeah. learning, they're improving. Yeah. They're chanting Nippon, that's it. That's great. Uh, it's just so much fun to watch this game. Um, Zoro is pushing against the Belgian jammers, pulls off the jam. Before his opponent can score any. Really? Yep. He's, he's, no, no, no. No, no. I think Jerome has just entered the track. Geronimus is signaling one. His jam ref is his signaling jam zero. Ref disagreeing. Beautiful. So we have 268. Twitter, <laughs> so, uh, Napo3 liked my Greenpeace reference. <laughs> Thank you. At Feel free someone. to use it in your own announcing. <laughs> See, when I'm in the US, I make it a little bit more American, <laughs> say that Al Gore liked it. <laughs> so clearly that one works over here, okay. And again, we have Lee Gemma for you too. <laughs> you too for Followed Japan. Followed by the Belgian Jammer. But he's not going to tap. Oh! And jumping cow. the apex. Um, cut trick track. Of, trick of red being sent off the track for a cutting penalty. What is you two doing over there? He had called uh, it. He called it. Very good. Yeah, I'm not sure what he was doing all the way over there either, but he had called it. <clears throat> I'm not sure. It seems like they were trying to do something there and didn't quite understand. That's a smart thing, no. You know, if, if you get confused, what are we doing, what's the plan, just call Hold it off, you get 30 seconds to reset. Yeah. Take a rest, reset, figure out what you're doing. Reorganize, 11 minutes left on the clock. And Japan are past the century mark. Past the century mark, uh, since two jams. And we have lead status in his power jam for you too. Yep, he is doing it again. He, this is second jam in a row. Yes. Maybe he just wanted to take 30 oh, seconds. Oh, oh, oh. Hard work and commitment on the part of U2, but a forearms penalty probably on black one, I see. Uh, thank you, lip reading. On the part of Belgium. Yeah, black one, Mr. Revenge. Um, and U2, U2 calling it off. Sure, calling it off. Maybe he just takes the 30 seconds in between no. gems to get a short. It's That's a part of it. I think the other part of it is the recycling costs him too much time. So he was knocked out, and his options were to take the points he had and kill it, or to try to recycle all the way back, but that would cost him hard work. Hard work, so breath. It's, right, yeah. so it's, keep the gas in the tank, 
and just call it off, reset, do it again from the starting line. Use the 30 seconds again, and he's still had enough oh. time. I think the jammer is still seated, and again, yes. the lead jammer. To Zoro. Japan still on the power jam. Plus, he only has two blockers to compete with at the moment. And those two started on the GBEMS power jam, uh, oh. pivot line. Yes. And here and comes Zoro. No pass, no point. Four point pass for him. Just under 10 minutes remaining. And now the Belgian jammer is standing. Uh, they didn't they see didn't him. They didn't see him. And if he's now, he should call it off right now. There and he does. He sees that he was passed. Calls off the jam. <laughs> and the Very Belgian good. jammer applaud, applauds Applaud. a power jam well executed. And that's actually a thing that I haven't seen in a female roller derby. This camaraderie, this, this handshake thingy, the shoulder clapping and applauding each other. It's one of the things I love about men's roller derby and specifically this tournament. Yes. Because it's even better than I've seen in the club tournaments, mm -hmm. you know. These guys are, if they're not friends before they showed up, they certainly are now. Or afterwards. I saw in the Belgian-Canada bout, a Canadian skater skated into the ref lane to physically block a Welshman. And U2 picks up lead jams. No, uh, no U2 send off for a back, for back block. block. Um, but a, a ca Canadian skater skated into the path of a Welshman and caught him just so he could pack it, pat him on the back for a really great block that sent this guy to the floor. Like, that was a solid hit, man. Thanks. <laughs> so, uh, Track Vader, jamming for Belgium. Track Vader coming around for another Grand Slam. And oh, the Belgian pack took off. The Japanese pack knows what to do about this. Great block on track Vader, but he's through. Some penalty being called. Someone is being sent off for a back block. A Belgian blocker. Number one, apparently, Mr. Revenge. <laughs> Boy, Mr. Revenge got his just desserts there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Japanese blocker U2 is back on track. Ran into a solid wall of black there, but doesn't pick up any points. Nope. Or no, picks up two. Two points. Two points. Very nice, but none for Belgium. Yep. And the people are shouting for Japan. Germany, Ireland is about to start over on the other feed. May have already started. Nope, still about. It has just started. Yep. And it's still nil-nil, but we're just Ireland, now underway. Ireland just picked up the first seven points oh, versus nice. Germany. It's so nice having that ability to check the scoreboard yep. on the other track. Ah, two points to or lead jam to you two. Two. Yep. Two. two you two. And uh, jamming for Team Belgium. Is that uh, Wimplash following right behind into the pack, taking Japanese skater down? That's right, both of them heading into the breach, getting hit hard. Jam this is, you know, the great thing is Japan are down to six skaters, but they're not letting up. No. Nope. They're not playing light, they're yep. playing smart. Yep. They're trying to conserve their energy in what ways they best can. This tournament's been a blast so far, hasn't it? It has, definitely. This is the second day in a row I've thought to myself, man, this has been fun. Oh, wait, there's some more left. <laughs> and we still have a third day coming up. I know, tomorrow. we still haven't awarded any trophies yet. I, I still feel like it's already Sunday because usually I'm only for, off for two days, but now it's three days and always like, well, you gotta leave tomorrow. No, it's Sunday tomorrow. You have a third day left and you only leave on Monday. Oh, they tried to close the hatch on Trick or Threat. Weren't quite able to. He gets through. Four points for both teams. And a low block called on number 18 for Japan. That's Gundam. You know, that's the other reason they have to play smart, is the next skater that gets ejected ends the bout. Yeah. And Japan don't want to reduce any minutes. Yep. They want to play the full 60. After all, if you had flown almost halfway around the world, you'd want to play the full 60, too. Definitely. 
You know, next year when we do uh, Men's Roller Derby Tokyo, we're not doing that. That's a team timeout called by Japan. So they're going to use that as a rest. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, a few five of them minutes, are sitting down. Five minutes left on the clock. If you ever watch American college basketball, uh, if you call a 30 second timeout, your players are not allowed to leave the floor. They have to stay in bounds. So a lot of colleges have five people, each of whom is holding a folding chair standing in one aisle. And as soon as that timeout's called, they run out there and put the chair down and put and put a water bottle right there next to the chair. So, so the players can rest for so a So they moment. can rest. <laughs> Which leaves about uh, 25 seconds of rest time exactly. for anyone, but better than none. Yeah, they, they think it's valuable, and they also, also think it's important because then they're seated and the coach is standing, so the coach is more commanding. You know, normally the coach is like, Five foot ten, and the skaters are seven foot one. Or the skaters, the basketball player. <laughs> Thirty-five viewers on the Japanese feed. Twenty-three hundred overall. That's not too shabby. Uh, it's two in the morning Japan time. I have just had that fed to me. Two in the morning, and thirty-five people are out. Thirty-five people are watching. Now, when we say thirty-five people, let me we be have explicit. Thirty-five. Computers. Unique logins, yes. 35 computers, and there Th may be yes. more person on one computer than only one. There absolutely. We have had photos sent in from um, Ottawa of viewing parties that had like 50 people in the back wow. of a bar. Wow. Well, they hire out a function room, put it on the projector that they have for meetings, and show the bout with full music and sound and, and everything. I mean, that's what we did with our leagues when we were watching the WIFTA tournament. Exactly. The WFTDA tournaments. Well, this is this is Roller Derby Super Bowl Sunday right here. Yeah. <laughs> All over the world, apparently. And we have a shout out on Twitter from Daniel Eddington. The Samurai Spirit Men's Roller Derby. Go Ninjapan. There you go. It's not cool runnings. It's Samurai Spirit. I like it. And uh, we have an official timeout called. And we have the bout being waved off. Okay, we have. Uh... Yep. All right. So that was official. The bout has been called for safety reasons. There's just not enough skaters for Japan to finish the bout, and so for the sake of the remaining Japanese skaters, that'll be it. The referees are not satisfied that they could safely complete this bout. So, Ninja Pan, just like Cool Runnings, just it like ends cool a little running. bit short, but you get your last lap. Go finish the finish line. Everyone is taking a knee on the outside line of the track. And Belgium. There's a tunnel on the straightaway. Japan are going to go through. Oh, this is so beautiful. This really is. No, this is great. There's the chant of Team Japan, Team Japan. I think they're shouting Ninjapan, Ninjapan. That could be, could be. It's hard to hear with these cans <laughs> on. <laughs> Other referees look, everybody, every one of them looks really disappointed, really pissed well, off. You know, it's hard to do but that as a referee. Yes, it is. I, I remember I used to umpire baseball, and there were a few times when I had to call a game due to weather and everyone's taking their time to come out and play some baseball and you have to say sorry guys you have to go home but there's lightning it's would you rather play baseball or die <laughs> it's kind of an easy choice so the teams are still celebrating with each other that's the right crowd is cheering everyone's waiting for team japan to take a second round around the track of course they get a second lap And it, Team Japan are going through the, the tunnel. Some of it's their own skaters. And there's Team Belgium coming yep. out of the tunnel. That going. was a great bout. That was an amazing bout to watch. I don't care that it, it didn't end quite at the end. That was a great bout. And it, just seeing 
as we already said, how much uh, Japan has evolved during these few bouts during the tournament. And now uh, we're just waiting for the score to be confirmed, but it looks like we have 297 for Belgium on 142 uh, for Japan. And, and so on behalf of myself, I'm Statman. I'm Valkyria. And, and we'll see you next time. And we're going back to the studio now. Yes.